All right, I think we're live. Hello, everyone. I'm Volta. I'm the artist behind Color Snack. And this is my husband, Dan. He's the in-house mixologist. I am the husband behind Color Snack. The husband also behind Color Snack. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, the, the mixologist of, of tonight's show. Uh, we'll be making an April spritz, which is going to look something like this. Yeah. Well, since we just yeah. migrated platforms over from Instagram, you yeah. should probably tell people what this is all about. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is our weekly show uh, called Watercolor Cocktail Hour, where we are learning how to make a cocktail. So Dan is going to show us how to make the April spritz. And then I will be showing you how to paint it with watercolors because it's fun and why not? Yeah. So, you know, after a hard day of work, you want to wind down, maybe have a good date night. Here we have an opportunity to make a nice cocktail and then paint it with your significant other. Yeah. So what a fun night. It's like a midweek brunch. But like afternoon. in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A happy hour without the regrets. Yes. Yes. There yeah. we go. Yes. And this week, as Volta mentioned, we're doing Aperol Spritz. Um, Aperol Spritz is highlighted by the uh, signature aperitif of Aperol, mm -hmm. of course. I'm going to ramble for a little while. I like to talk and give a little bit of history. So anybody that's watching right now that is trying to wait for the cocktail, I'd go ahead and try a little bit just to kind of get your palate familiar with it, especially if you're not that familiar. So Aperol, as I mentioned, is an aperitif. Aperitifs are designed to be consumed before a meal. They're highlighted by slightly bitter to very bitter flavors, uh, citrus and floral notes, with just a little bit of sweetness. Uh, contrast that to the digestifs that are intended to be consumed after a meal. Mm. Those tend to be very sweet. So things like your amarettos. Yeah. Or, okay, that's an interesting, didn't know that. Mm. And Aperol is arguably the most approachable of the aperitifs. Even by itself, it's it's more sweet, less alcoholic. You don't really get any bitterness until kind of like the very end. And it's very subtle. I wouldn't say it's like an overwhelming bitterness because I I'm not a fan of bitter things and and I do like Aperol. So yeah, yeah. What's a, what's a good example? It's very it's more herbal than bitter. So, but not even that, because I don't also like herbal stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Or Campari, the, the finish tastes very much like bitter Ricola. Yeah. You end up with a with Aperol that kind of tastes like, I don't know, like rosemary, maybe sage. You get mm. like kind the, of like a like fruit. a strong root beer. The fruitier. Sarsaparilla. Maybe. Yeah. Do you want to sip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it smells so good. It is. It's very good. And it's very pretty, too. Yeah, my favorite thing about this is the color. I mean, it's so beautiful. It's going to look so fun as a watercolor painting. Yeah, and these, the, the whole line of spritzes, originally it was not an Aperol spritz. They, people would come to visit Italy, and they felt like the wine was too strong. So they would add some soda water to it. And this became a Venetian spritz. Just a little splash of, ton of uh, soda water, of uh, mineral water, I guess, since you're in Italy. You know, San Pellegrino and Perrier, the, the Italians love sparkling water. So they'd have that laying around. Let's throw it into our strong wine. And hence, we had a Venetian spritz. Uh, eventually, they started adding aperitifs uh, to the spritzes and created the cocktails that we know now. Uh, originally, it was not Aperol. It was one that's escaping me at the moment, but I will eventually remember. It was one that I've never had before. Mm. Uh, but Aperol came quickly, and then one that I mentioned also, Campari, uh, another signature red. Also, it's pretty, but it's, it's like a little strong, like strong in terms of like flavor. It's yeah. just like mm. punch in the face. <laughs> yes, I would start like, with it's Aperol. Definitely <laughs> Yeah. If you're going to take the plunge and start exploring these, <laughs> yeah. start, start with, with Aperol, and then you can mess around with either some of the stronger ones if you're like, mm, that's good, but I just need a bigger punch in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Let's go with Campari. Or if you're like, well, that's good, but I want something with 
more herbal notes and more complexity, but also a little more sweetness. You can go with some of the Amaros. Uh, this one we did on our last show with a uh, midnight, midnight stroll. stroll yeah. Midnight stroll. Uh, yeah, the Ramazzotti Amaro, very like cola forward, as well as those herbal notes that we talked about. But all right, all right. So that's Let's enough of that. Let's start making <laughs> this cocktail. I'm sure you guys love hearing me ramble. You know, I'm just trying to make things entertaining. But let's get the show on the road. First thing that we're going to do, I know we have this glass that Volta painted. Yeah, we don't actually yeah. own this glass. Traditionally, this is made <laughs> in a giant wine goblet. We're not big wine drinkers, so we don't own giant wine goblets. Oh, a tiny one. Yeah, we have a little tiny one, but I want to drink this, yeah. so I'm going to make it in a Collins glass. So to the Collins glass, we're going to add some good size ice cubes, our giant ice cubes here. And I'm making this for myself so I can use my hands. No judgment, please. <laughs> How many ice cubes are you going to fill in here? Three. All right. So it gets nice yeah. and full. See? Mm -hmm. And now, the order of this is important. If you talk from the, to the people from Aperol, they have mixologists that go around and train people in the correct way to make an Aperol spritz. And the Aperol recipe, <coughs> no matter what you've heard elsewhere. Is if you look up an Aperol spritz, they'll talk three, two, one, where it's three ounces of Prosecco, two ounces Aperol, one ounce of soda water. That's wrong. They're equal parts, mm -hmm. equal parts of Prosecco and Aperol, and then a splash of soda. Mm -hmm. It's literally on the back of mm. the Aperol bottle. That's the go. instructions. Yeah. Now, those equal parts, you start with Prosecco, then you add the Aperol. You do that so that they mix together and the Aperol just doesn't sit on the bottom. For those of you that follow us from Instagram, you may also notice that I'm trying again to do <laughs> Prosecco. I've not had a good history with Prosecco on these streams or any other type of fizzy beverage or yeah, bottled beverage. Last time it shot into the ceiling. Yeah, I just tried to set the bottle down and it exploded. <laughs> Hopefully it won't happen this time. Trying to be very careful yeah. here. Pointing it towards nothing that's of value. Also as a tip, with champagne and Prosecco, you want to rotate there uh, go. the bottle, not the cork. Hmm. Look at that. Hey. And no accidents. Great. No accidents. <laughs> so we are going to do a Three ounce of each, give or take. That was roughly one. So um, from Aperol, what I, I learned was from one of the Aperol mixologists was that an easy way to remember how to make the spritz is if you um, remember the word pass. So P is Prosecco, A is Aperol, S splash of soda and then final s is um orange slice slice of orange yeah that. look at that it's so pretty already yes what a lovely cocktail now one last carbonated beverage just <laughs> uh, cause uh, me uh, pain uh, uh. <laughs> uh, okay uh, it's a very uh, bubble forward uh, cocktail. Yes. <laughs> it's called a spritz. Yeah. There you go. I just top a little more. Oh, there we go. Just to give it that ombre to make mm -hmm. it look good in a painting. Yeah, it looks very watercolor y already. Great yes. job, Dan. Yes, well, last thing. It's very important. We have this place near us that has these oranges that they call fist-sized oranges. I have no idea where they get these, but they're always delicious. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's take it and make ourselves a health-sized wedge. Oh, look at that. There you go. It's so pretty. That, madam? Thank Ooh. you. Aperol spritz for you. 
Uh, it's like summer in a glass. Yes. It's perfect for this weather, which is already summer here in Texas. Oh, very refreshing. So good. Very like light mm -hmm. and yeah, mm -hmm. highly recommend. So like this, this is a, a long weekend coming up. So you could definitely make this for you and your friends. Your, yeah, it's a great Memorial Day cocktail. Yeah. So. All right. Well, there we go. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, Aperol spritz. Thank you, Dan, for showing us how to make the cocktail. So now I'm going to slightly just rearrange the table so that we can make this watercolor oh. painting. Oh, hi, everyone. We weren't paying attention to the comments. Oh, well, but... yes. Um, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hello That's... from LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, hi, Tiffany. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Carl, Joella. Thank you so much for joining. All right, so let's. Yeah, um, just we like love the new platform too, Tiffany. It gives us much more space because it's widescreen. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm just gonna rearrange this really quickly. Uh, yeah, and I'll pay attention to hello everyone. <laughs> All right, now we're just facing the desk. Let's see, can we see the painting? Turn this around. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Here we go. I'm gonna put it here. Good. <laughs> All right, just one moment. Almost there. It's so heavy. That's the beauty of doing like a cocktail show and a, and a watercolor demo is like, we have to slightly rearrange the, the setup. All right, got my watercolors, got some paper. <laughs> oh, I, I'm not sure, it's, it just says LinkedIn user, but someone said, great to see you again, Volta. Who's that guy standing next to you? Just kidding. <laughs> That's Dan. <laughs> um, you think is the lighting? Does the lighting look okay? Well, I think or... you're gonna block it when you sit down. Unfortunately, oh, just yeah. Yeah, let me move this guy. All right. Over a bit. Yeah, I want to make sure. I am your beautiful assistant. Thank you, Dan. Oh, there we go. Light source. Perfect. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Thank you. Here's some paper for you, Dan. Uh, so we're gonna be painting this. Got my watercolors. Um, <laughs> all right. So Dan, uh, here's a pencil for you too, if you wanna <laughs> uh, sketch along with us. All right. Yeah. Thank all right. On. So we're gonna be painting. Um, first, we're gonna sketch out the gloss and. It looks kind of like, you know, a little complicated. It's not your standard glass, but really it's going to be fairly easy to sketch. So we're going to kind of break it down into like simpler shapes. So we're going to start with a little upside down triangle shape. Just to kind of get our base. Hold on just one second. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Where did the light go? Okay, here we go. We're back. I'm moving it over to this side uh, so that because okay. the shadow from your hand was covering uh, okay. up. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for being a wonderful assistant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got our little upside down triangle, and then we're gonna um paint, like sketch like a little. I uh, forget the shape, the name of the shape is like a trapezoid, trapezoid, trapezoid. trapezoid. Yeah. So it's going to like go right on top of this triangle, kind of like this. And then we're just going to extend these two lines a little bit further to like finish off, like um, give a little height to the glass. And then here at the top, we're just going to be a slightly curved line, kind of like this. Uh, and then let's see. So I'm gonna erase these extra, all this little extra line for now. 
And you could also make these um, these little points a little bit rounder so that it looks kind of like the edge of the glass. And then uh, we're gonna do uh, the stem and that's just gonna be two parallel lines kind of extending downwards. Uh, a little bit more narrow kind of in the main shape, but then it goes uh, the lines kind of like diverge, like they go, they go out, outwards, they like kind of curve out. And then finally, we're gonna do like uh, another curved line here at the bottom. So that's essentially kind of like the main, the main shape of the glass. So we got our, you know, first little triangle shape, then the trapezoid, trapezoid, I want to keep calling it. <laughs> trapezoid. <laughs> trapezoid, and then like another actually trapezoid, smaller on top of that, uh, if you just kind of break it down. But um, yeah, so we got our main shape here. And then uh, for the ice cubes, I'm just going to do two, two little square shapes just to give the impression of there's two ice cubes in there kind of like this feel free to add more if you like and then for the orange slice um think of it kind of like as a half oval shape so let's see i'm gonna start with this curved line that's gonna kind of go outward a little bit outside of the glass let's see like this and then flat line And then I can also, I'm just going to erase a few of these extra, extra lines. But essentially, like this orange slice is like sitting on top of the, top of the ice cubes, uh, which is why, you're, which is why it looks like it's floating, but really it's just like on top of the ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a floating orange wedge. Yeah. And now I'm just adding a little, another little curved line just to kind of show that uh, orange rind part of it. And then we'll do the details with watercolors. So yeah, we're pretty much, pretty much done with the sketch. How are you doing, Dan? I'm sketching. I'm doing okay. Yeah? I'm, I'm trying. It's looking great. I like your glass. All right, let's get to painting my favorite part. All right, so uh, for this April spritz, we're gonna be using lots of orange, uh, but before I put any color, I want to add a layer of water first. So I'm just gonna add, um, so I squeeze a little bit of water, it's like in the bristles of my brush, and I'm painting like right around these two square shapes. So I'm just adding painting with water this method is called wet on wet, and that's because we're adding a layer of wet water first, and then we're adding, you know, wet paint on top of that. So I'm getting like a nice, nice little glisten over here in this side of the shape. Now I'm gonna grab some orange from my palette. Let me see here. I'm just gonna mix a couple of different oranges together. Just so I have like a nice mix variety. And I'm just gonna start slowly kind of, so I'm barely touching um, the paint uh, to the paper, but you know, I'm just kind of spreading it out. And because there's a layer of water, you'll notice that the color is like immediately just kind of flowing into the rest of the shape. It looks really fun and flowy and watercolory. Actually, now that I'm looking, this this orange is too yellow. I need, I need a I need to punch it up with more orange. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm mixing in a little bit of like red to kind of get more of this like Aperol spritz color, which is okay if we started like with you know a lighter orange because we can always drop like a darker color on top. Just and a happy accident. 
Yeah, it still looks fun. It's kind of has that like really like a glowy undertone. Which is what the, the cocktail looks like too. So let's see, I'm just covering this up. Just dropping a little bit more of this orange here and there. You know, while we're painting this, it's funny how many Italian food myths, I guess, yeah, come about because the Italian version of something was supposedly too strong for tourists. Hmm. So this is exactly the same story of how Americano came to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those weak foreigners, they can't <laughs> handle Italian wine, they can't handle Italian coffee. <laughs> what other Italian things can't they handle? They probably were like, this panettone is just too delicious. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to make uh, Easter bread. This nocciolata is too tasty. Yeah, we're going to make, we're going to put palm oil in it and call it <laughs> Nutella. Um, all right. So uh, the next step I'm going to do is the ice cubes. And I'm just going to, um, I've got a clean brush and I'm going to soften the edge a little bit here. Right on the outline of the ice cubes. And you'll see that the color is starting to like spread in, flow into the ice cubes a little bit. So that's that's fine because we want we want it to be like uh, we don't want these you know ice cubes to be unpainted, but we still want want to be able to see them, but also you know have them look like as if you know they're part of the glass or submerged in the cocktail. And we can also add a little bit of outline to them with some of this darker orange. Yeah. There we go. So it's, and then another thing I wanted to mention, um, so we, we wanna add a little bit of a highlight. So on the left-hand side, uh, there's a bit of, uh, well, there's a light, the light source is coming from here. So. I'm going to clean off my brush and then lift off just a little bit of the color so that it looks like there's, you know, the light source is hitting the glass and it looks like a nice highlight. Oh, hi, Angie. Thank you for joining our, I want to keep saying, calling it Instagram live, but <laughs> LinkedIn, it's LinkedIn YouTube, and <laughs> everywhere live. Our yeah. live stream. Our live stream, yeah. So we are painting an Aperol Spritz. I'm really excited. It's such a fun. Um, I, 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 so I attended a um, Italy clubhouse about this drink. That's how I, how I learned about it. And they were referring to it as sunshine in a glass. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a great name for it because it looks um, so happy and, and like sunny. Unlike the Dallas weather that we've been <laughs> having lately. <laughs> oh my God, it has been raining for like a week straight. Yeah. This is Dallas, not Seattle. I know. Dallas is getting confused. <laughs> uh, all right, so now I'm going to paint the, the orange rind and I'm going to just add a little bit more water to dilute it so it's a little bit lighter. And I'm just going to cover this entire shape. And you'll notice like I'm, I'm uh, leaving a space here because I want the orange slice to look like it's inside of the glass. So that's why I'm leaving this little bit of glass like unpainted. Okay, I'm going to let this dry before I actually, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab some darker orange. And while this area is still wet, I'm just going to add like little, little tiny lines, little wobbly lines to represent like the, the pulp of the orange. Here we go. It's a really fun effect to do because the colors are like spreading out, but 
you can still see some of the lines. All right. Um, then for the last uh, part, we're gonna do a, we're gonna outline the glass. So I got a little bit of gray here already mixed up. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of water to dilute the, the paint so it's not super dark. Just, you know, gray enough. I'm just gonna use that to outline the stem of the glass. And then I'm just gonna add like a few little lines here at the bottom to kind of show the shadow a little bit uh, on like the the glass, the, the actual the base of the glass too. Uh, and then I guess final thing we could also add a, a more pronounced shadow underneath. So this is gonna be a cast shadow because the light source is coming from this direction, and then it's casting like a bit of a shadow on the glass. And this uh, really simple technique just helps with um, kind of giving your sketch a little bit more dimension and also like making sure that it's not just like floating in the air. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this dark gray and just gonna add a little outline. Very thin, not applying a ton of pressure. Just, and then it's gonna kind of come off to the edge just a little bit. And then finally, I'm gonna clean off the brush and going to soften this with my brush. So that way the, the um, cast shadow looks very soft and isn't very kind of like pronounced and doesn't have a harsh, harsh line, a soft line if you will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're pretty much done with our Aperol spritz, you guys. Uh, Dan, how, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, I'm, I'm trying. There you go. Yeah, let me see. So this is Dan's cocktail painting. Um, a few notes. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Some notes. Uh, you could you could soften the edges a little bit more to like of the ice cubes to like pull in some of the color because right now it just they look a little bit too like pronounced. Wow, pronounced ice cubes. But but it looks really nice, and then maybe lift off a little bit more color uh, on this side, or like add more pigment on the opposite side to have a nice contrast. Because like when you have um, those contrasting like colors when some one area is a little bit lighter the other one's darker it just makes yeah. makes the sketch uh pop off the page the proverbial mm -hmm. pop gives the it page. some dimensionality exactly yeah but otherwise looks great yeah. well, thank you darling yeah all right so hi angie <laughs> um thank you guys for watching um should yeah I... yeah well, we can tilt it up real quick so people all right. can yeah. See our pretty faces from yeah. last time. There we go. We tilt the light towards us. There we go. Yeah. Good enough. Okay. All right. Guys. <laughs> well. It's a little hey, we're we're learning. It's a we're, new setup. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for bearing with us, and thank you so much for joining our live stream today. I hope um, this inspires you to make an apérol spritz. I mean, look look at it in the light. Like look how the light is reflecting it. So beautiful. It's just literally sunshine in the cup. Like, it's delicious. Highly yeah. recommend. And also to paint it as well. Yes. And well, we'll be enjoying a couple of those tonight. Yeah. Um, huge, huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. And everyone else, thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, same time, same place. Right. And what about Seven. the people that enjoy your lessons and would like oh, to learn more? Thank you. you. Thank you, Dan. If you would like to learn more um, or, you know, watch more tutorials or do a monthly workshop, uh, you're welcome to join my Patreon channel. I will share the link in the comments. Um, also, I have a book coming out in July uh, and it's available for pre-order. Yeah, there'll be a link to that as well. Yeah, in yeah. The comments. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Yeah. Bye.
Bye, friends.